This is Twit. Is what we're seeing always been the case and that mm. that that the story of Apollo is a special case because of the circumstances. Yeah, or, or 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 is there a sea change now with, you know with this this new kind of private public NASA uh, commercial partnership that that could change all of that. Yeah, no, I know I I think the situation really hasn't fundamentally changed regardless of who's building the rockets. Um, and new space, old space, and I always, I ask everybody I talk to, what, what is new space as opposed to old space? And the answers range across the board, and some of them don't necessarily hold a lot of water, but that's beside the point. Um, the, the reality is our political system is built upon two, four, and six-year time frames. And, uh, and if you're a member of Congress, you're only looking out two years. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's a max. Yeah. Um, you, you may have an agenda that, that you'd like to go farther than that, and that's, that's great. But if you're not reelected, that doesn't matter. And, uh, and so you have to start from ground zero every two years, four years for a president, six years for a senator. And, uh, and consequently, unless those are all working in sync, it doesn't happen. It's only when we've got... A, a major agenda item that pushes everybody into this in this direction, in my mind. Um, and, you know, the reality today is NASA is not going to get a lot more money. Yeah. I mean, it's just not. It's going to bump along about where it's been. And, and if we can go back to the moon on that budget, everyone will cheer. <laughs> but if we can't do that, then we're not going to go. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and we've had some successes of late and greater successes. than I think a lot of people thought were going to take place with the rise of of SpaceX and the, and the and that launch system, as well as the one from. What's its name now? It used to be, it used to be Orbital Sciences and it was Orbital ATK and now it's something else. Northrop Grumman Space Systems. <laughs> there it is. There it is. And 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 having those those systems in place has been a real boon for supporting uh, Earth orbital activities. And those same sort of companies and others like them may be able to bounce beyond or Earth orbit and go other places as well. But we've not seen a lot of demonstration of that yet. Mm-hmm. And, um, and once we do, once again, I'll cheer. But uh, <laughs> Uh, but I, I'm going to be circumspect until I see some some capability there. So NASA is doing business in a new way. Cost plus contracts, hopefully, are a thing of the past, although SLS soldiers on. Um, I don't know. Was the uh, the what do they call it? There's an ongoing contract for support and building of more SLS rockets. Was that finally completed cost plus or fixed fee? I don't remember. You know, I don't, I don't have that offhand either. Yeah, I know it was part of the conversation, but you know, we are in a new space age. We've got these, these, the billionaires boys club, which has been great, frankly. I mean, when you look at last year, Tark and I were talking about this the last couple of weeks, uh, I forget what the actual number at the end of the year was, but when I was checking in, we had 105 launches in 2023 and 93 of them or something with spacex so that's a very telling story right there i think they had 98 launches last year 98 98, 96 96 orbital and then the two starship flights so this is doing business in a new way um so uh, here's another one of those thorny multi-part questions a do we ever get another kennedy moment of somebody standing up and and saying okay here here's my bold assertion because you know we've we've all heard the story about Mars. I remember by 2012, I think it was that graphic came out from NASA of the big Mars tentacle that went from <laughs> from Earth to Mars like a squid. And I and I I actually I was teaching university at that point. One of my students asked me when it was we landed people on Mars so long ago because they had seen so many great computer graphics. They thought we had we had done it. So I so part one, do we get that bold assertion? And part two. Um, is doing business in this new way going to make the difference? We all hope it will, or are we going to get our shoelaces cross tied again? Well, I'm putting you right out there. I apologize. Yeah. This is really skating well, towards the thin ice. Yeah. Well, I mean, my, my, my initial response is your guess is as good as mine. 
<laughs> but um, but the reality is, you have to ask yourself the question: When a president were to stand up and make a statement like Kennedy made, what would drive that decision? We know what drove Kennedy's decision it was all about the Cold War, and absent that Cold War, he never would have done it. Right. Uh, we've had other presidents a couple of times now stand up and say back to the moon and on to Mars. And how well did that turn out? Um, so for somebody else to do that, you have to ask the question, what is the overarching political problem that they are seeking to solve? Because first and foremost, they want to solve a political problem. That's, that's what they're doing. Right. Uh, it's not that they think that, I mean, they may think it's a little cool, but uh, but they're not going to expend political capital on this unless they think there's some broader overarching concern. And I've, I've used Mars as an example of this repeatedly. Um, you know, what would it take to get a president to stand up and say, look, we need to begin an over, all overarching effort uh, to reach Mars by some date certain? And, uh, and how well would that be responded to by other people who don't necessarily agree with them? And, um, and what is the political trigger, the overarching concern that would drive that decision? What is it that would make a, per make a president stand up and say, this is what we need to do? And I just don't see it. Mm -hmm. Somebody immediately said when I said that in a, in a public speech, uh, well, what if we found life on Mars? And I said, well, then maybe the best thing to do is to leave them alone. <laughs> Did they throw rocks? <laughs> well, they might. I, I got out of there. But anyway. Is, is, the, is the China argument, because uh, Bill Nelson, the NASA chief, mm -hmm. former senator, brought it up again this, uh, yeah. this week with the, uh, the Artemis delay announcement, you know, that that uh, the, the U.S. was still going to beat China to get uh, uh, astronauts back to the moon. Is that not, uh, maybe it's a, a more of a lukewarm driver than the Cold War was, but it's one that, that has been ramped up uh, in, in, in Nelson's kind of, uh, you know, session uh, leading, uh, leading NASA, as that is like a chief driver. He, he brings it up to Congress in almost every appearance uh, to remind them and, and whatnot, but it doesn't seem to have the same verve or, or zhuzh, right? That, uh, that, you know, the Soviets are coming to the moon, you know, had during the cold war. Yeah. Well, and, and you, you misphrased it. It was red moon. I think <laughs> that, that was the, the big shaking fist that, that, uh, Johnson used so effectively. Sorry, go ahead, Roger. Yeah, no, I, I mean, you, you know, the reality is we don't have a fear of the, of the Chinese the way we had a fear of the, the existential crisis with the Soviet Union. I mean, it's just not the same at all. Uh, yeah, there are things we disagree with them on. Um, there are things they, they do that we don't like one little bit. And, uh, but if they make it to the moon before we get back there, who really cares? Yeah. Uh, and there's probably polling on that, by the way, but I haven't seen it. <laughs> and, I'll bet there is. And, Most people uh, probably go, huh? Yeah, and, uh, and 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 beyond that, if we're talking about Mars, you know, is there a concern that the that the Chinese are going to get there before us? I don't think so. Uh, yeah. As I said, you know, there there is some tensions between the United States and China, but it's nothing like the existential threat that we felt in the 1960s. I mean. When I was a kid in, in grammar school, we crawled under our desk and duck and cover exercises like that would protect us from a nuclear blast. I thought it was stupid when I was 10. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there.